God has given every person in this building and every person that's watching online live or later that every individual, every person on the planet has a destiny. And God has plans to get us to that destiny. And I'm so glad that I gave my life, and I know that you are, that you gave your life to God. And in giving your life to God, you submitted to His plans, and those plans get you to your destiny. I told the students the other day at, at, at the college, I said, you know, if God says that when we get to heaven and we all stand before him, we'll give an account for every word that we've spoken. And nowadays you'd want to say, and we'll give an account for every post that was made. We'll give an account for every word that's spoken. Would it not also make sense that we'll give an account for every act of obedience? Amen? That there'll be a reward for those acts of obedience. And, and I would also say that there will be a, a, a reward for every dollar given to God. If our words mean that much, so will our actions and our obedience. And it's apparent to me in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24, that God has a plan for our lives. That if we give our lives, I, 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 I would have to be real honest with you and tell you today that my life is better because I gave it to God. How many of you have ever had any glimpses of what your life would look like if you did not give your life to God? How many have ever had any glimpses? I've had some, some scary glimpses of what Matt Ward's life would look like if it was not surrendered to God. And so I'm so grateful that I, in giving my life to God, my life is a lot better than it would have been without Him. I'm glad, I'm glad we've given our marriage to God. My wife is glad that I've given my life to God. How many wives are glad your husband's serving Jesus today? Amen. I mean... I felt almost going into quicksand right there, but I'm going to tell you today, when you give, your, give in obedience to God, God has a plan for your money. And I know some people are a little bit intimidated by that, but don't be. When you, God has a plan and you fulfill God's plan, guess what? God will respond and he'll do something better with it. God will do more with your life in one lifetime than you could have done with your own in ten lifetimes. So it's not just about money, it's about giving your life to God. I'm going to say that to you one more time. God will do more with your life in one lifetime than you could have ever have accomplished on your own in ten lifetimes. And if you're here today and you're not serving God, like you know God has called you to do, and maybe you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, before the end of the service, you're going to have the opportunity to have a real relationship with Jesus Christ. And guess what? When you give your life to God, God will take your life, and He'll make more of it in your lifetime than you could ever in ten lifetimes. Let's give God thanks today for sending His Son to make this thing possible for us. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Such a pleasure then to, to worship God when we know that about him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your blessings on this, this ministry, this church, and your people today. We believe your, your best is what you have in mind for your people. And it's coming to pass day by day, week by week. And we're grateful, we're excited for what's still to come. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen and amen. Let's worship as we give this morning. My wife will be preaching today. Will you just take a hand and let's raise it and, and just declare that I'm gonna win my battles, that I am gonna win my battles. No matter what comes against me, I am gonna win in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, that's how I win. We're not singing about defeat, we're talking about winning in the battle. Winning in the battle. Let's just pray together. Lord, we thank you that you have called us to win. We just thank you, no matter what's around us, no matter what pressure, that today we're going to leave knowing that you help us with pressure, that you strengthen us, that you come in and you speak to us. I pray for every person. Every person here has a story. And I just want to remind them today that they can win. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Turn to, turn to the person beside you and say, Go Eagles, and you may be seated. <laughs> I lost half of you, probably more. 
The Bible does talk a lot about, about eagles. Amen? Sorry, I have the mic. I'm sorry. I just got to make you pay attention. I just got to know you're with me. Amen? I have so much going through my mind, but I'm going to go right to the word. Amen? Somebody say, please. Please. I want to talk today. I'm going to read um, a scripture in, in a few minutes, but I want to talk. I got this. Um, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not trying to sell you this, okay? I actually will not inbox you and try to sell you this. But I want to talk to you today about something that I have that I love. Okay, I love it. Like, seriously. Um, I got, on Black Friday, I got an Instapot. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. My husband's like, they don't know what that is. I, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. How many here have an instant, I, I say it wrong, instant pot? I, raise your hand. Like, not something that you grow when the sun is shining, but this is like something you cook in your house with meat and potatoes, and just want to throw that out there. I mean, I know Maine, but just want to throw that out there. <laughs> this is something that I've heard about, and, you know, I, I you know, I, I, cooking is not the love of my life. I, I enjoy it, and... Um, but I read about this and heard about this, and Trina, it's her fault. Um, she just kept talking about, you can throw frozen meat in this. And you say, where is she going? I promise, just stay with me, okay? You can fro throw frozen meat in this, seal it, set the timer, and in 20 minutes, you can have a meal. Like, how crazy is that? Like, if you don't have one, you go get one today. Okay? Like, seriously. Um, <laughs> but he's like, that's awesome. If you, yeah, I'm telling you, go get it. And um, so I went out and got one, and I, I love it. Like, I have not cooked one meal that, like, everybody doesn't. Well, maybe Macy on one. She's not into that chili. But um, other than that, everybody is like, it's great, Mom. Great job. I mean, new food. It's just fun, Okay. So there's something about this pressure cooker, because that's what it is. When pressure, first, I don't really even understand it, but you shut this thing and you make sure the valve is off or you burn yourself, which, yes. Um, so you, you do this and the pressure cooks it different. Sometimes in Christians' lives, pressure comes. It just, I'll just be honest, if you don't think that you have pressure, <laughs> that medication's too heavy. Okay? Like, because, like, seriously, everybody has a little bit of pressure. If you haven't, I'm not forecasting it, but. You will. I mean, it's just there. There are, and, and you say, I'm going to feel defeated. I promise I'll, I'm going to drop you low, but I'm going to bring you back up in Jesus' name. Sometimes there's pressure at work, pressure at home, pressure with bills, precious, pressure with loneliness, pressure in marriage. Pressure wanting to be married. Pressure not wanting to be married. Pressure with sickness, not me. Uh, pressure with children. Pressure with school. Pressure with direction. There's just pressure. There just is pressure. And it comes out of nowhere. And it's pressure. I want to talk about a man today that I think is one of the greatest men in the Bible. Like, I, I, I love studying different people. And Elijah is a prophet. And he is a strong 
and mighty man. I mean mighty, powerful, uh, anointed, uh, victorious, um, doesn't have a lot of fear over people. He just walks in victory. I studied him, and I love, there are so many parts of Elijah that I love. I love that Elijah was used in healing. There was somebody that had died, and he prayed, and he believed, and God healed him. How many know that you want an Elijah on your side? He prophesied. He went and he just prophesied. In the worst times, he just prophesied. He went to a lady that, a widow that felt like this was it. She, she was dying, her and her son. There was nothing left. They were in such a place of pressure. And Elijah hears from God, goes to this lady, and says, go cook me a meal. Go to that pressure cooker, that Instapot in your kitchen, and get me some bread. And she's like, this is all I have. This is it. We're going to die. And he says, this is what God told me to do. Do it, and you'll be blessed. Sometimes obeying God makes no sense. She did it, and she was blessed. It was like constant. It was, he prophesied over the land. He did this. He did what, whatever he did, it seemed like he was just blessed and powerful. It just seemed over and over again, Elijah was blessed. Do you believe that you can be blessed? In a sinful world, you can be blessed. There was something about this moment that I want to talk about. Elijah had seen God do miracles. He'd been a part of them. And then he gets to this point where I love it because I'm a woman and we don't fully understand men. Like, I mean, really, Denise, come on. Like, we're trying, but you know. That's why we have better together, right? So... This is not something that I would do, okay? I'm not into the taunting and the talking back. Like on the basketball court or on the soccer field, when those guys begin to... Blah, 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 I'm like, dear God. I don't like it. I just don't like it. I know it's part of it. Like tonight in the game, they're not going to be going, you're doing great on the other side. They're going to be, you won't be able to hear, and you'll be glad. Because they're just like two men. Mm -hmm. And Elijah was that way. You get to this point, and he was just so angry that these people had turned from God. Do you know that people can turn from God? Yes. And he, had, he was at this place in his life that he began to prophesy. And he said, you know what, let's, let's have a competition. You know it's a guy thing. When there's, I mean, the girls in the house, we have a, a thing in the house that the guys do, and it's who's man of the house. And, and they do it, and there's only two men, and we don't let Rocky, because he's an in-law. No, I'm just kidding. We just, maybe we should do that. Put him down. And, um... So, <laughs> well, I'm going to invite him next time. He's part. Yes. Yes, we are. I'm the woman of the house. He's like. So, the two men, the two people that want to compete in our house, we time and we see what they can do. And whoever wins is the man of the house. Now, my husband has always picked the games. But I tell you, that might be changing this year. I'm not sure. There's just, you know, and you're cheering for your husband, and you're cheering for your son, and you're like, mm, you know? And I just want you to know that we didn't play last year. Micah, do you want to know why? Because there was a little fear going on, I think, in our house. So, 
you know, it just, anyway, that has nothing to do with my message. Sorry. Woo! So, uh, so Elijah was at this place, and he said, you know what? I want you to get all your prophets, your false prophets that were believing in a false god, to come on up, and we're going to have a fire-building contest. Fire building. This is not survivor. This is the real thing, okay? So he says, you go ahead. Gets a bull. They cut the, the sacrifice up. And they, this group, the prophets that did not believe in God, started to build. And they were praying. Send fire to whoever they were praying to. Their false God. They were there, and they were praying. And you know what was happening? Nothing. Nothing. They were, they were saying, God, build the fire. Uh, come down. And they begin to cut themselves. You read it. The Bible is so interesting because they were demonic. And, and we already have the blood. We don't need that kind of stuff. But they were cutting themselves, trying to please their God. And I love Elijah. He's like, is he sleeping? Like, what's going on? You need a little help? Because your God's doing nothing. And he is there. And he's taunting them. And there's 400 and peop- 450 prophets of this false God. And nothing is happening. Do you know how many are on Elijah's side? Elijah. It's against, let's say, I know there's more, but let's say it's all of you against him. I'm not taking you on. Um, and, and all of a sudden, you're, you're wanting that fire, and nothing's happening. Nothing. I love this about Elijah. This is what he does. He rebuilds the altar. That's excited for a woman right there. You know I'm really on fire right there. He rebuilds the altar. He, take, he takes 12 stones. 12. There's a reason. It's for the tribes of Jacob. He is proving the God that he serves. And then he makes a trench around the bottom just because he's a man and he wants to show off a little bit. And he puts water on it. And he puts more water. He puts it on four times. There's enough water to not start a fire. And all of a sudden, he prays to God. Some of you just got to pray, and he'll show up. You just got to pray, and he will show up. All of a sudden, he prays, God... I come to you and show them that you're God. And all of a sudden, the water didn't matter. It came down and the fire started. And this is what he says in 1 Kings. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known. Can you say, let it be known? That you are God in Israel, and I am your servant. That I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. That these people may know that you are the Lord God. That you have turned their hearts back to you. Then the fire of the Lord fell, and it consumed the burnt offering, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust licked up the water, and it was in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their face and said, He is God. And Elijah said to them, seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So he seized them. And Elijah brought them down and executed them. He took them down. 
You have miracle after miracle after miracle that you watch Elijah. He's a part of. He is a man of God. And then, come, somebody say, and then, you see Elijah go to a cave and hide. You see a man that has seen God do so many miracles go to a cave and he hid. This story makes, I'll be honest, no sense to me. A man of such power and authority, under pressure, does things that we would never normally do. Pressure does a lot of things to us. Pressure. Have you ever just been under pressure? Like, have you? Raise your hand if you've been under pressure. It sometimes makes people do things that they would not do. It's the pressure. It's the pressure. It's the heaviness. It's the constant. It's the hurting. It's the tired. It's the loneliness. It just, sometimes you just want to run away. I'll be real honest. If, if we were to be honest today, there's not probably anybody that hasn't thought about running away. I wouldn't go to a cave. I'd go to a mall. <laughs> just being really up front. I'd go to a mall that I didn't know anybody. But I'd go to a mall. Or I'd just run away for, I think, three days would be all I'd need. Shut my little cell phone off. You cannot get a hold of me. Pressure sometimes does different things to different people. You have a man that is powerful, and yet he's in a dark place. If you think about what a cave is, it's dark. God didn't call us to ever live in the darkness. He told us to live in the light. He doesn't want us to be alone. That's why he created marriage. That's why he created that you have to be around people. He doesn't really want you to be in a cave. Elijah wasn't hearing God. Elijah was taking the pressure and doing it himself instead of all the other times he's like, God, do it. He was saying, the people have not changed. And look at what we've done and what you've done, God. And all of a sudden, it just got to him and he went and hid. I wanted just to come today to tell you that God comes to caves. He comes to caves. He's not scared of hard times. He's not even afraid of pressure. He's not. He, you know, he knew where Elijah was. He fed him on the way because he knew he wouldn't make it without eating. He was alone, and he was in the cave, and the pressure was heavy, and he wasn't sure what to do, just like some of you. My husband spoke to somebody just a few weeks ago. The pressure on that gentleman is so heavy. There's sickness in his home. There's so much, and he's just a great man. But the pressure, the pressure... He's here today. The pressure. But God is not afraid to come to the cave. I love this part. One of my favorite scriptures. It's the craziest thing that I love this so much. That, that God went to the cave and said to Elijah, What are you doing here, Elijah? He could have said, get out of the cave, you idiot. But he did not. 
There are times for that. I've, I've had a couple of those. Well, maybe not idiot, but I, may, maybe, I don't know. It's going Monday. If it was Monday, maybe idiot. Um, if it was Sunday, you know, maybe not. I'm just kidding. Um, but he could have said anything to Elijah. He could have said, where are you supposed to be? What are you supposed to be doing? Stop it. But he said, Elijah, what are you doing in the cave? God didn't call you to be in the cave. I didn't put you here to go in a cave. He came to the cave. God could have done something to get him out of the cave, but no. My God went to him. I am so thankful that God still comes to me. In all of my different needs, he still shows up and says, Darcy, I see the pressure, but I got you. Stop trying to do it yourself and let me take care of it. I got it. When we do it ourselves, we become weak. But when we do it in him, we become strong. That's why last Sunday night we had people come up here and declare what was going to happen this year. Because sometimes you just got to say it. You got to believe it. You got to know what's really the truth. You got to speak the promises. I love that you have Elijah in the midst of it. And God says three things to Elijah. He says, go, which means get out of the cave. Go. Go. Somebody say, go. Return on your way. That means go back to my will. No more your will, my will. And then he says, anoint others. Because we're never supposed to stop ministering. Never. We're supposed to be ministering on Tuesday at work. We're supposed to, on Thursday, when we take a test and we're done or whatever, we're still supposed to anoint. When we see somebody, wherever we are, that needs help, we're supposed to anoint them with his anointing, not mine. Mine will get you to a cave. His will get you anywhere and be victorious. There's something about the cave and coming out of the cave and coming out of the cave. When we were in Spain, um, uh, obviously we needed an interpreter. Like in everything. There was just everything. You know, you'd speak, and you'd speak louder because they didn't know what you were saying. So I don't know what that is when you say, you know, <laughs> where, bathroom. And there, you know, and you say it louder because, you know, you think that's going to help. It does not. So we had interpreters, and one of um, my interpreters, I think it was the first night, or the second night, or the third night, or the fifth night, or the tenth service, or whatever it was, um, they were in a blur, was this wonderful young man named Joel. I would, I would take him as a son. I, I would like him to come and be my son. Um, he, you know, I don't want to, I'm not saying take my daughter. I'm just saying come be my son, okay? Um, I just loved him. I just loved him. And I, he was with me at the altar, and his English, I think, was better than mine because he's been to many, many, many colleges for English. And as I'm at the altar with him, and as I am prophesying over people and speaking faith over people, and I go to the next person and they, they want to tell you everything, um, and then you speak to them and you pray for them, and then you think the line is almost over because there's like only four people left, and then you close your eyes and you look back up and there's like 20, and you're thinking, dear God, when does this end? But as he began to speak that faith, I saw him begin to change. 
as I was at the altar ministering, and as he had to repeat every word I said, the faith began to rise in him. Now, he was a Christian. He was a spirit-filled Christian, but I'll be honest, I think he was in a cave. But as I began to anoint, let's say, it anointed him. There was something about it, and you could actually see it. As we talked to him later, he's from Pakistan. And I'm a mother, so I'm like, do you see your family? You know, do you have, how's your mother? You know, because I'm a mom, and it's just ridiculous. And, and he's like, will I Skype? I was like, when have you been home? Well, I don't go home. Because his family is in hiding because they're Christians. And when we were leaving, we wanted our picture with us. And, and we took our picture with him and we prayed over him. And, and my husband really just prayed over him. And he said, pray for my family. This young man, it seems like he shouldn't be doing what he's doing, but he's continually anointing because God has spoken to him in a cave and told him to go. There is something about being in the spot, and his family wanted him to go, obviously, but he was still ministering, and he was still saying, pray for my family. Because once you have victory, and once you have been out of the cave, you want everybody else to be out of the cave. When you have been in the cave and you have come out, you want everybody else to be free. God, I pray that in this year that we live in complete victory, that when we go near the cave and the pressure begins to come against us, that we say, oh, I'm going to hear God's voice in the midst of it, in the midst of it. Paul and Heather, if you want to come. There is this thing on my Instapot that when you're done cooking and the buzzer has gone off, you switch it, and it's called the release valve. And all of a sudden, all that pressure leaves that. It leaves it, and then you can open it up. I think that the Holy Spirit is like that pressure valve. It just comes in and it just takes it. And it says, it's okay, I got it. I got it. You know, 11 years ago this week, um, and you've heard this testimony, so I'm going to go very briefly on it. But 11 years ago, our son Micah, um, was going in for just a regular surgery and went to get some blood work done. And a very, very, very long story found out that they said he had leukemia or a very um, rare blood disorder that would affect the rest of his life. I remember the one thing the doctor said to me that day was, he's going to live a restricted life. With my six-year-old boy sitting there, I remember his, him saying, after today, his life will be different. I think that was probably one of the more pressure times for me. I think the cave was closing in on me. I think uh, eleven years ago, after our fast. We didn't know that when we were fasting, what we would face after the fast. And there are victories after the fast, but sometimes there are a few battles that you got to get through to get the victory. So 11 years ago, we sat at the cancer care that was in the hospital at the time with our son who was six and had this test all day. And we had this wonderful, wonderful doctor that we couldn't understand. We needed an interpreter. We couldn't understand anything he said. What? 
you know? And, and at the very end of that day, it was a Monday. We had been to church, and we asked the church to pray that day. It was a Monday. And we sat in that room, and I, and I remember him saying, the tests are negative. He has seven tests that are positive. Seven. They took seven tests before Monday that were positive. I don't know. Something changed between that week and Monday. Something changed. Like something, like I remember speaking to the head of the division after, and she said, I know what he told you, but we have seven positive tests, seven positive tests. So I know what, what he said with that one negative, but this makes no sense. We want to do more testing. And I said, nope, nope, he's done enough. He's done enough. And they said, well, we want to test your other children because this makes no sense. You know what happened? In our cave, Jesus came. And he spoke a word of faith. And that word of faith made us go back and believe for the miracles. There is something about pressure. It, I had never had a panic attack before, but I had one with that. And I'll be honest, I'm a little embarrassed about that. But I remember, and you've heard this story, so I apologize, but I remember being in Dover, parked on the side of the road, couldn't breathe, and remember thinking, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I don't know how to breathe, I don't, I don't know what to do. And I remember the Holy Spirit came to my car and said, is this how you're going to do it? Are you going to do it? Or are you going to let me? He didn't come in and say, Darcy, I wanted that. I'm a woman. Who doesn't want that? He came in and said, is this how we're going to do it? And I remember I could breathe. And I said, no. There is something about the cave, but there's something about him speaking to you in the cave. There's something about it. His voice is so good. His voice is so powerful. His voice will give you direction when you have none. His voice will give you healing when you need some. His voice will say, I am with you always. His voice turns it around and says, go. He doesn't want you in the cave. He doesn't. Will you stand with me and not move? Will you just stand with me? Some of you are like Elijah. You're men and women of faith. And you've just hit a little bit of a wall. I just came to say to you that my God still comes through walls. <sighs> my God still shows up and gives direction. So whatever you need today, whatever, whatever it is, I don't have to know what it is. I don't. I'm, I'm not God. He needs to know. And when you let him know, He'll show up. He'll show up. He'll show up. You've been wanting a little direction. You've kind of come this far, and you want a little bit more, and you're kind of saying, you know, I'm right here. I've been doing right. Where are you, God? God wants me to tell you today that he's going to show up. This isn't it. The Lord's anointed you to help others. You just got to keep listening to his voice. He's so good. So I, I want to do something. I know that we, what we have, and I want it to be done early, and I'm done early, and we're going to do everything we need to do today. But I want to pray over every person that when you hit a cave, 
that God will help you in the cave. So I want everybody to come. I got a really clear direction on the end. I want you to come on down. Come on down. on down. Let's worship a little while you're coming down. I have a couple. They're trying to make their way, but it is very difficult. Give them a little room to get through. They didn't know I was going to do this because if they did, they wouldn't have showed up. Come on up. I want to introduce you to sweet sweet Aubrey. Show her off a little bit. Usually my husband gets to do this, but today I get to do this. I saw Chris and Caitlin in probably the worst cave that you could be in ever. But I got to sit with them in the hospital the other day with this sweet little girl. It doesn't mean that their cave still doesn't ache. It doesn't mean that their heart still is a little bit broken. But this is proof, not just this beautiful gift, because wow, but this is proof that God is good in the really hard time. And he's good in the really good time. He's good in the caves, and he's good when he calls you out of the caves. He's good. He's good. She said he's faithful. He's faithful. And he always is faithful. He's always faithful, and he will always be faithful. He'll always be faithful. He's always faithful. I'm so thankful that Chris and Caitlin didn't stay in the cave. That God helped them to leave the cave and keep walking. I just wanted to show off a little miracle today. You may, you may, you may get down there like, dear Lord. Some of you don't know and that's okay, but trust me, it's good. It's good. How many of you today would just say, I, I have some pressure. I have some pressure. Would you just raise your hand and keep your hand raised? I have some pressure. Wow. 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 Steve just lost a sister this week. Some pressure. I just want you to know that God is your helper. And I'm believing today, whatever your pressure is, there are so many different areas today but I just wanted you to know that God can still speak in the cave so will you look around will you just turn and pray for somebody today Tavia there's a lady that and maybe you and Lisa right beside Brad will you pray with her sweet Maria the Lord will just touch her and help her in her cave and her daughter. Will you pray for her daughter too? Yes. Is that your daughter, right? After I said that. Okay. I just want to pray that no matter where your cave is, that the Lord is going to help you. In the name of Jesus, I pray peace. I pray, Lord, that you help with the pressure. I pray in the name of Jesus that they'll begin to feel the Holy Spirit speaking. And it will be supernatural. I pray, God, that that pressure, that heaviness, 
that cave experience will be better and that you'll speak to them in the cave and you'll help them. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will show up and that you'll help them in the name of Jesus. I pray for healing. I pray for health. I pray for wisdom. I pray for marriages. I pray for loneliness. I pray, Lord, that that word that keeps coming, that they can't do it, that they'll know they can do all things through Christ who gives them strength. God, you're so good. You're our helper. Help our people today and release that pressure. Give them direction and let them know that you are going to be with them every step of the way. You're going to be with them and you're faithful. I pray in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, that they feel different today. I pray that they feel that you're there with them today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are with us, that you're for us. I pray in the name of Jesus, there will not, they won't walk in defeat, but they'll walk in victory. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for that. Will you just raise your hand for a minute and just thank him that he still speaks in the cave. That he still speaks in the cave. That he still speaks in the cave. That he gives direction. That he gives help in the cave. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's such a good God. And he's our helper. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Before we dismiss, the greatest pressure that you can ever have is distance from God, sin, the conviction of sin. Sin is real. Sin is destructive. Sin is a death sentence. There's a lot of pressure. Today, Jesus Christ is preached before you and the message of the life of Christ is that he's come the pressure that sin brings on you God has greater power than sin and he can take that sin off of your life and you can serve him with absolute 100 percent victory and it would be a crime honestly for us to dismiss the service if there's one or if there's 20 people today that you're not ready for heaven let me ask you this. How many of you, if you were to die today, and I mean this with sobriety, if you were to die today, you know without a doubt, and everybody around you knows without a doubt that you'd go to heaven. Raise your hand up nice and high. You know this. You know this. Excellent. Not everybody could raise their hand because either you don't know or you've never made a public confession so that other people can know. I've stood at a lot of funerals and everybody had to hope. That ought never happen to your family members. Everybody ought to know, and that's why we come to him publicly. That's the genius of God, for Jesus and always call people publicly. And today's the day, maybe you've drifted from God publicly. Then guess what? Why don't you just put everything the enemy would like to do in your life to shame and say, I'm going to come back to God publicly. I want, I want there to be no question over my life, who's my Lord? I want no question in my life who I'm in alliance with, and it's not with the devil or hell. I've made an alliance with God. I've made an alliance with heaven. And whether you're 12 or 92, would you please, for your sake and for the sake of your family and friends, make a public commitment today? If that's you, the Spirit of the Lord is here to reach your life. You're the most important thing that will happen today. If everything else was put on hold for you to be saved, that would only be gain. It would not be in a loss. If that's you today, be strong. Be bold. Don't be cowardly. Don't be weak about it. The strong faith is a faith that gets results. If you're here today in this altar, in these seats on the balcony, say, that's me. I want to pray that prayer when you pray that today. I either need to make a new commitment, I need to make a first-time commitment, or I need to recommit to God. In fact, the way I'm going to do it today, I'm not even going to call you out here. I believe you're where God wants you to be. Just stretch your hand up nice and high and say, that's me. Over here, leave your hand up. Over here to my left. Who else? 
Over here to my right, down here in front of me. Who else? Who else? In the balcony on the floor? That's awesome. I think I see three to four people right there. Let's pray this way. Are you ready? Right where you're at. Pray this way. Repeat after me. We do it family style. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming today and speaking to my heart. You brought me to this service to hear this message. You spoke to me. Please forgive me from all my sins. I'm turning my back on that life and I'm embracing a God life. I admit I came in here far from you. But I believe that you came to my cave of sin and to pull me out. And I confess in February 2018 I have a brand new beginning. I have a brand new heart. And this year's going to be different. I'm out of the cave. And I'm living in the light. And the devil has no control over me anymore. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Let's shout a good amen and thank God for absolute deliverance and victory today. Amen.